Once again, we've had a huge earthquake in the Middle East. On October 7, 2023, exactly on 11 11 a.m an earthquake 6.3 on the richter scale hit the city of herat in afghanistan while the people were processing this type of earthquake eight minutes later another earthquake hit five and a half on the richter scale do you think it's over no 23 minutes after this shot, another 6.3 earthquake hit the same area. And right after this one, another one with the power of 5.9 hit. Basically, in a span of 30 minutes, four different earthquakes hit the city of Herat. These earthquakes have killed more than 2,000 people, more than 2,000 injured, and more than 500 people missing. Around 8 months ago on February 2023, a massive earthquake hit Turkey and Syria and it killed around 60,000 people. And 8 months later, another powerful earthquake hit Herat. There are a lot of places in the world that are prone to earthquakes. But why are earthquakes in the Middle East so common? There are many reasons. But when you look at this map, you can get a better idea on why. You have two tectonic plates near the Middle East, one called the Arabian Plate and the other one called the Indian Plate. These two massive plates are always pushing against the Eurasian Plate, especially the Middle Eastern area. If you know a little bit about Earth's history, you know that these tectonic plates were not always here. And when the supercontinent broke off, this is where they ended up. The Arabian Plate came with the entire continent of Africa and it hit Iran, which is part of the Eurasian Plate. All this pressure caused the Zagros Mountains to go up in Iran. Even though the Arabian Plate smashed itself into the Eurasian Plate, the pressure has not stopped and this has been going on for millions of years. All this pressure causes mountain ranges to be formed and it causes them to grow year after year, but not by a lot only a few inches per year. You can see how high a mountain range is, but the real deal is happening underground. When tectonic plates are against each other and that pressure builds up and they get stuck, all that pressure continues to build up and all of a sudden it releases. When these tectonic plates release all that pressure, it causes things like this to happen and they're called earthquakes. On the other side, the Indian plate is also putting a tremendous amount of pressure on the Eurasian plate. This insane pressure has caused the tallest mountain range to be formed in the world, the Himalayas. And just like the Zagros, it continues to grow. But the mountains aside, it's putting an insane amount of pressure against the Eurasian plate. And the Eurasian plate fights back, it's not gonna get defeated that easily. But all this leads to more earthquakes. And this is exactly what caused the Afghanistan earthquake in Herat. In the Middle East, mainly Afghanistan, Iran, and Turkey are very prone to earthquakes. You have two massive plates that are pushing against the Middle East. And the Eurasian plate is massive, so it doesn't want to move. And these plates get stuck to one another. And in different areas of the plate, in different fault lines, different types of earthquakes happen. So the situation is extremely complicated. You can't predict earthquakes, but you can guess. But in the Middle East, you can't even guess because there are times where it doesn't have earthquakes for more than a century, but all of a sudden you have plenty of earthquakes in a span of a decade. Just like we said, when two plates get stuck to each other and finally release, that's what's called an earthquake. But the insane pressure that builds up never fully releases. And alongside all of this, it causes other tectonic plates to receive stress and maybe they want to release. And that is exactly why after every earthquake, there are plenty of aftershocks. And this is exactly what we're talking about. It might be hard to believe, but eight months ago in the Turkey-Syria earthquake, there was more than 30,000 aftershocks. And in the Herat earthquake, there were three massive aftershocks after the main earthquake. And four days after the main earthquake, 
another massive one came with a power of 6.3 on the Richter scale. The earthquake that happened was a few kilometers away from the city of Herat, and the fault line was south of the city, which is called the Herat Fault Line. But the epicenter of the earthquake was the northern part of the city, which you can see right here. And this is exactly how powerful it was. One of the positive things about this earthquake is that it happened during the day. If it happened during the night, the amount of deaths would be more than 10,000. But even with all that, 2,800 people and more have been killed. And the chances of that number going up is very high. More than 2,000 houses in Herat were destroyed. And this is exactly why we mean it's good that it happened during the day because most people were outside their houses. And if it was night, the amount of deaths would be tremendously higher. Unfortunately, after this earthquake, the war between Israel and Palestine took off and the news networks only wanted to cover that. So nobody spoke about this earthquake and all the news networks were talking about the conflict between these two. It's interesting to note since the earthquake was close to the Iranian border, a lot of Iranian towns felt it as well. In an area where there was plenty of wars for decades and it never really had a chance to rebuild itself, is now hit with a massive earthquake. Another good news is that a lot of countries are on board and they're trying to help the people of Afghanistan. And if you would like to see the list of them, this is the one. The people of Afghanistan really need the world's help. If it's possible for you to help them, please do. One thing we can hope for is that they once again rebuild the city properly because the earthquakes are not gonna stop. And the only thing you can do is build the buildings safer. In 1997, pretty much near this area, a 7.3 on the Richter scale hit this area. Since it wasn't near a very populated city, not an insane amount of people died, but it was extremely powerful. And it's also interesting to know that the city of Herat felt it as well. So this is what we're saying, where this place is very prone to earthquakes. When you look at the history of earthquakes in the Middle East, all of a sudden in the same century, tens of different earthquakes have hit this area. And it could be in Afghanistan all the way to Western Turkey. All this is because of these two plates. And if we could and it was possible, we would stop these two plates from putting an insane amount of pressure on the Eurasian plate. But you can't do that because you cannot mess with planet Earth. You can do one thing. If you want to build a shack or anything you want to go inside of, build it properly and don't cut corners. In this case, not only is our investment in danger, it's not going to kill us either. Herat is a very historical city and there are ancient buildings, but they are all standing after an insane amount of earthquakes throughout history. Why is that? Because they were properly built. Herat is a very ancient city, so there are very old structures, but a lot of them are still standing today. Do you see this beautiful building? This is called the Herat Citadel and it was built more than 2,000 years ago. Even though throughout history it was destroyed by the Mongols and the Muslims, but it was always rebuilt and it still stands today. And since it was properly done, the earthquakes don't bring it down. They might bring a piece of it down, but not the entire thing. Either way, we're very sorry for the people of Herat and we hope for a speedy recovery.